hello all welcome back to my channel this is dr sonia musakuti and today in my video i will be discussing about the maxillofacial processes so before going into the topic if you are new here please don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you won't miss any of my future videos so coming into our topic the maxillofacial processes is defined as an art and science of anatomic functional or cosmetic reconstruction by means of non living substitutes in the regions of maxilla mandible and face that are missing or defective because of surgical intervention trauma pathology or congenital malformations so coming into the classification of maxillofacial defects the maxillofacial defects can be classified according to the etiology residual defect incidence and location into the following types intraoral defects and the extraoral defects Both these intraoral and extraoral defects include the congenital and the acquired defects. The cleft lip and palate which is seen in both adults and infants comes under the congenital intraoral defect while the traumas and tumors in maxillary and mandibular areas are coming under the acquired intraoral defect. Similarly auricular defect ocular defects and syndromatic defects are coming under the congenital extraoral defects and the trauma and tumors of auricular orbital nasal and auricular defects come under the acquired extraoral defect now we can go into the classification of the maxillofacial processes the maxillofacial processes are divided into four types the tissue retained maxillofacial processes implant retained maxillofacial processes the tooth retained maxillofacial processes and the implant or tissue retained maxillofacial processes so in order to make this video easy and understandable i will be dividing each defects and its processes separately the most common congenital defect is the cleft lip and palate so first we will briefly go through the types of obturators that are used in each phases of treatment for the cleft lip and palate Initially a feeding plate is fabricated by the prosthodontist for the neonates born with cleft lip and palate later in the presurgical phase a palatal surgical obturator is fabricated in the postsurgical phase an immediate postsurgical obturator is fabricated in postsurgical fistula a palatal obturator is made in cases of speech problems palatal obturator is fabricated with a speech bulb in the soft palatal region So next we can go through the processes which are made for the treatment of hard palate defects. The Aramanis classification classify the relationship of the defect area of the hard palate to the remaining abutment teeth. So the defects of hard palate can be divided into six different groups. The class 1, class 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. In case of class 1 The surgical resection is performed along the midline of the maxilla. The teeth are maintained on one side of the arch. This is the most frequent maxillary defect and most patients fall into this category. The next is a class 2. The defect in this group is unilateral, retaining the anterior teeth on the contralateral side. In class 3, the palatal defect occurs in the central portion of the hard palate and may involve part of the soft palate. In case of class 4 the defect crosses the midline and involves both sides of the maxillae there are few teeth remaining which lie in the straight line In case of class 5 the surgical defect in this situation is bilateral and lies posterior to the remaining abutment teeth The class 6 defects are rare to have an acquired maxillary defect anterior to the remaining abutment teeth this mostly occurs in trauma or it is congenital So the treatment of the hard palate defects include the fabrication of obturators. There are various different types of obturators. These include surgical obturator, interim obturator and the definite obturator. So what is an obturator? It is defined as a process which is used to close a congenital or an acquired tissue opening primarily of the hard palate and or or contiguous alveolar structures. So first we will briefly go about the surgical obturator. The surgical obturator is inserted at the time of surgery that is immediate surgical obturator or else it is called as the delayed surgical obturator when it is inserted only after 1 to 2 weeks post maxillectomy This obturator can be either for partially edentulous or for completely edentulous but no teeth will be present on the obturator 
സർജിക്കൽ ഒബ്ജറേറ്റർ റെഡ്യൂസസ് ദ ഓറൽ ആൻഡ് നേസൽ കണ്ടാമിനേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് പെർമിറ്റ്സ് ദ ഡിഗ്ലൂട്ടേഷൻ ആൻഡ് റെഡ്യൂസസ് ഹോസ്പിറ്റലൈസേഷൻ ദിസ് വിൽ ഓൾസോ എലിമിനേറ്റ് ദ നീഡ് ഓഫ് നാസോ ഗ്യാസ്ട്രിക് ട്യൂബ് വിച്ച് കളക്റ്റീവ്ലി റെഡ്യൂസസ് ദ സൈക്കോളജിക്കൽ ട്രോമ ഓഫ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ദ ഇംപ്രഷൻ ഫോർ ദിസ് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഒബ്ജറേറ്റർ ഈസ് ഡൺ ബിഫോർ ദ സർജറി The various advantages of the surgical obturator include it provides a matrix on which the surgical packing can be placed it may reduce the oral contamination of the wound and this may reduce the incidence of local infection it lessens the psychological impact of the surgery by making the post operative closure easier to bear with and so on now coming into the interim obturator this is inserted after 3 to 4 weeks post surgery to ensure the wound contraction is minimized it can be modified from the iso that is the immediate surgical obturator by adding a teeth and a bulb this type of obturator improves the speech deglutition function and sometimes if the patient undergoes radiation therapy this can be used to maintain the defect and provide adequate function Now coming into the next type of obturator that is the definite obturator this type of processes is given when the surgical wound is fully healed normally the definite obturator is fabricated using cast metals however acrylic definitive obturators can also be used so next we can go through the processes which are used for the treatment of soft palate defects these include the palatal lift processes and the speech aid processes The palatal lift processes addresses the velopharyngeal incompetence by physically displacing the dysfunctional soft palate in the hope of closing the velopharyngeal pore enough to cure the hypernasal speech or prevent the nasopharyngeal regurgitation of the fluids or solids during the pharyngeal phase of swallowing. This palatal lift processes consists of an oral component that stabilizes and secures the processes and an oropharyngeal extension that superiorly and posteriorly displaces the impaired soft palate so next one is a speech aid processes in a complete soft palate resection speech aid processes can be used for the rehabilitation of the defect proper speech aid processes must have extension into the velopharyngeal space which occupies the nasopharyngeal space at the level of the atlas and axis That comes to an end to the brief explanation of the processes that we use for the soft palate defects. So next we can go through an another type of obturator which is called as the hollow bulb obturator. Most of the palatal defects causes various problems in speech, mastication, deglutition and aesthetics. So this palatal obturator is the only substitute that covers this defect and aids in normal speech production with elimination of hypernasality. The hollow bulb obturator can be of two types the type 1 and the type 2 the type 1 include the open and the closed type where the type 2 include single piece and two piece so that comes to an end to the processes which are used for the maxillary defects in the next video i will be mainly discussing about the mandibular defects and the processes which are used for the rehabilitation so till then it's dr sonia musakuti signing off thank you